The Committee of Adjustment is a body appointed by City Council to hear re applications for relief from the city's zoning bylaws and also to hear applications to sever property within the city in accordance with the provisions of the Planning Act. The procedure followed by this committee is that we will first hear from the applicant. We will then invite those who wish to ask any questions or voice their objections to the application to come forward. The committee will consider all the information presented and will then render its decision. If you wish to be notified of the decision of the Committee of Adjustment in respect to this application, you must submit a written request before the Committee of Adjustment makes a decision. Requests are to be made to the Secretary Treasurer, Mr. Jeff Bannon, in the Building and Planning Department, jbannon at stratford.ca. This will also entitle you to be advised of a possible local planning appeal tribunal hearing. Even if you are the successful party, you should request a copy of the decision since the Committee of Adjustment decision may be appealed to the Local Planning Appeal Tribunal by the applicant or another member of the public. Any decision reached by this committee is not final and binding until after the appeal period has expired. If you wish to appeal the committee's decision to the Local Planning Appeal Tribunal, you may do so within that appeal period. By completing the request of decision form, from Mid J. Bannon at Stratford.ca, persons other than the applicant or his or her agent who wish copies of the decision will have decisions sent to you. Do any members have a declaration of pecuniary interest with any application? No. Black. Hearing none, then we'll ask for the first application to be presented. Okay, so the first application is A09-18 and it's for 32 Stratford Street and 34 Stratford Street and the lands are zoned R2 bracket 1 and so the application was deferred at the August or October 10th 2018 Committee of Adjustment meeting and the original purpose of the application was to obtain variances for 32 Stratford Street um, for reducing the lot frontage and lot area for a duplex and for 34 Stratford Street to reduce the minimum lot area and lot frontage for a two unit converted dwelling. So the applicant has amended their original application to remove the previously requested variances for 34 Stratford Street for a converted dwelling and has added a variance for a shared driveway and for 32 Stratford Street, the owner has added additional variances for a shared driveway, a two unit converted dwelling and for the alteration of the definition of an existing single detached dwelling. The applicant has requested four variances on 32 Stratford Street and one variance on 34 Stratford Street. There were no agency comments of concerns or public input that was received and staff are of the opinion that the minor variances requested are minor in nature, meet the four or meet the four tests of the Planning Act and the Provincial Policy Statement and have included two conditions that relate to the elevations and the driveway that staff would like to see included within the decision. Okay, is there someone to speak to this application? Is Nick from MTE. Nick, are you available? Can you hear us? Nick's on mute. Let's see if I can. Yeah, the unmute function's not working. Can Nick unmute himself? Let's see. Nick is available. He is here. So we'll just give us a couple of minutes and we're going to try if we see if we can fix the technical difficulty here. Okay.
Can Nick hear us now? Because he appears to be unmuted. More matter, can we hear him? Yeah. Yeah, he is having difficulties with the passcode. I'm going to look up that information and provide it to him. It'll just be a couple more minutes. Okay. I guess, does anyone have any questions for me on the committee in the interim? Any questions from committee members? Um, just more. Ah, so many files open. Um, okay, so I saw that top of page 10. It said the owner has advised that they would like to have two units at 32 Stratford, but they do not know logistically if they will build a duplex or build a single detached dwelling that would be converted into a two unit converted dwelling. I believe I, I understand correctly from the, the language following that sentence that at this point that does not matter. Is that correct, Rachel? So based on how our zoning bylaws are written, a, con a converted dwelling is the conversion of an existing single detached and existing is defined as existed prior to the year 2000. Um, so what the owner is looking for is the flexibility that if they decide to build the single that they can convert it as a converted dwelling in the future or if they want to build the two units up front that they, they can do that. So that's why they have asked for the variance to change the definition of existing and are looking to allow for uh, variances for a duplex or a two unit converted dwelling. But that ultimately either way it would result in two units. Any further question? I have right. with Nick and he is going to call in um, uh, with through the phone, so he should be online in just a minute. Okay. Quietest meeting I've ever been at. Any luck on him calling in, Jeff? I haven't seen anything come up yet. I'm watching for it. Okay. If you prefer, you can move to the next application and then come back to his application once we get him back online. 
Members of the committee okay with that? Fine with that. Yeah, okay. no problem. All right, let's move on to the next application then. Okay, I might have them online actually now. Okay, so the oh. next application. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, do you have them? Uh, I see his number. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you now. All right, so if you want to just uh, answer or give a wow. description of the <laughs> application and what it's about, um, any additional things you wish to add over and above what uh, the planner has outlined. Um, yeah, absolutely. So I apologize for all that. <laughs> no. Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. My name is Nick Craigshaws. I am the owner of 34 and 32 Stratford Street and have resided here for nine years. To note, I am a civil project manager for MT Consultants and a development specialist for Invest Stratford and have a good understanding of the development industry. So to date, we have completed all conditions with the consent to sever the parcel of land and are in the process of pricing the proposed build. So we are proposing the, uh, to develop 32 Stratford Street with the ability to convert the lower level of the dwelling as a separate legal legal unit. The proposed site plan and building were designed with consideration of the following. So one, to provide adequate site functioning between 32 and 34 Stratford Street with consideration of a duplex. Uh, to, provide, or, uh, to propose the build to not remove mature trees in the area, to architecturally resemble similar features of the neighborhood dwellings, and the building be designed to, uh, to be converted to a duplex. So through my work at Investor Offer, I understand the need for intensification and additional housing. The proposed development provides an additional unit that will help with the housing needs in Stratford. Therefore, I'm asking that the requested variances for development to construct a legal duplex be approved. Okay, anything to add? Any committee members have questions of the applicant? It's Charlene Nick. Yep. Um, Hi. I can see it. Um, so at this point, you're not sure whether you're renovating the existing building to be two units or you're going to, no, I guess dividing the existing building or if you're adding to the existing building. Is that what I understand? No, no. so it's a separate entity. So 30, uh, I gotta get this straight, 34 Stratford Street is the existing dwelling. And right. I dropped the variance for a converted dwelling on that. It's the okay. new building that uh, I've asked oh, I, for, okay. right? And I've designed it in a way to uh, to be converted basically by a door. We're just not sure at this point logistically, we're waiting for pricing to come in is what's, what's happening. So we're kind of leaving it open. Ultimately, we want to do it. It's just financially, we need to know. Okay, okay thank you. Dave or Roger, questions from either of you? No, not I'm from Ray, thanks. Okay. I'm good. Is there anybody else to speak to this application? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion. I'll be happy to move it. Oh. Okay. Go ahead, David. Yeah, I'll uh, move the record, uh, move to uh, accept it. With the, With the two conditions. Nope. And the reason? Reasons, no public input, and well, I think it's desirable for the development of the property. Okay, seconder to that? I'll second, second that. Okay, Roger, second. Any further discussion? All in favor or all, anybody opposed to it? Hearing none, that is passed. Thank you. Thank you, Nick, for uh, persisting. Okay. Thank you, and that, and I'm actually gonna. I think I'm gonna speak to the 615 here on. Do you just want me to stay online or call back? Um, actually, to make it simple, can we go to 615 here on now? The planners. I would. I would move that. Okay. Second. Second. Charlene, second. So let's go to that. If we can uh, skip to that one, if you don't mind. Yes, I, I can do that. I'll introduce the application. So the application is at 615 Huron Street, located on the southwest corner of Huron Street and Alone Avenue. Purpose of the application is to reduce the parking, the setback to a parking aisle and a parking area and to increase the maximum size of a driveway width on Huron Street. 
And the reduction is to be from 7.5 meters to 4.3 meters on Huron Street. And the maximum width of the driveway on Huron Street would be from 9 meters to 15.5 meters. We have not received any public input and we're recommending um, in consultation with engineering that the owner is required to revise their concept plan to allow only right in and right traffic from Huron Street and that they also have to receive site plan approval for the revisions to the existing site plan. And that's just to ensure that proper traffic movements will still continue on Huron Street. And that was the concern raised by the engineering division. Okay, Nick, do you want to add any other comments to this? Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, so just going through it, I'm not sure if Steve may or may not be on the call, so you can check in. I'm just here, I said I was going to be on the call in, in the event. I'm not sure what number he's calling from, but if he is there, I'll speak on his behalf. So we do understand, like, it has been uh, approved through site plan. So the approved site plan permits one-way traffic along the northern drive aisle and a right-in movement from Huron Street only, uh, and a right-in, right-out access to a loan, okay? So the approved site plan does provide, or sorry, does not provide the ability to access Huron Street when leaving the site. So the client is proposing the requested variances to provide for two-way traffic along the northern drive aisle on the site and to provide access to Huron Street. It is, it is understood that there is concern with the traffic movement accessing Huron Street and therefore right in, right out is proposed for the amended site plan and is illustrated on the site plan sketch. So I'm not, I, I was kind of confused with the, uh, with what you had said there, Jeff, because I think the sketch shows a right in, right in, right out movement onto Huron Street. Through the chair, if I could speak to that. Yes. Um, yes, Go ahead. The, the sketch does show a right in and a right out traffic movement. Uh, engineering is not convinced that the design that has been designed at this point is sufficient enough to ensure that there's no other traffic movements that uh, either people exiting onto Huron or entering from Huron. Um, in a manner that's not a right in, right out. So we will be looking for some further revisions to that plan, um, but that would be dealt with through a site plan application and a site plan approval. We feel that it can be done, and that's why we're recommending we have it the minor variance, and then we'll work on the details of exactly how that, that concrete island or the, the curved island between the right in and the right out, how that how wide that has to be the function. But we're willing to approve or recommend the approval of the minor variance because we think it can be worked it. Okay. I under okay, now I understand that. And then one last thing was on the initial application, I, did, I wrote it for Steve and I'm not sure what modifications are after it. Uh, and you may have noted, I may have misunderstood, but I believe there was a request to remove the landscape requirement on the West property line. Okay. Hello? I Jeff, do you have a comment? I wasn't aware of that request. I think Steve just tuned in too. Yeah, Steve is Hello? on. And I have unmuted him if he wishes to speak. Okay, Steve, uh, did you hear the last question? A clarification? Yeah, so I, did, I, I did hear the last question. Um, we do want to move the, we want to remove the, uh, the cedar hedge along the west property line there. After speaking with Murray Guy, the neighbor right beside, we thought that might be best if we could do it that way. Um, so yeah, we're definitely trying to remove that cedar hedge. We're not trying to remove the green space. So we still want to plant grass right to his driveway. Uh, Jeff, does that have any bearing in terms of the application? We, through the chair, I haven't reviewed that portion of the application. Um, I just went back to the application. I didn't see it on there. Uh, I, Potentially, there might not be any concern with it, but I, I can't tell you without a doubt that it doesn't have any impact on the neighboring properties because we haven't examined that yet. So if that is something that the applicant wishes to do and have included with their, with their application, um, I would recommend deferring the application and there is a deferral fee that would be associated with that. But uh, if they want to include it with the minor variance, it's probably better if we deal with it uh, at a future meeting. Okay, uh, Roger, did you have a question? Uh, the, the reason for the removal of the cedar hedge, is it sight blind? Sight lines, I mean? 
the reason for the removal of the cedar hedge is I've spoken over with the neighbor there, Murray Guy, and we both feel that it's not necessary to have it there. So it's an extra cost and expense, and he would prefer if it wasn't there. After he's seen the building go up and after he's seen what things are going to look like, he'd prefer if it wasn't there because it actually will, you know, impede on a little bit of his snow removal. And, you know, we've got a good agreement there that we can, you know, work together and cut the grass, and it'll look a lot nicer that way rather than cedar trees there. Okay. So to Mr. Bannon, Mr. Bannon, you would prefer that we defer this to the next meeting, is that correct? To the chair, uh, yes, I think that the better option would be to defer that. Um, we haven't provided any planning opinion on uh, the removal of the cedar hedge, and it hasn't been circulated. So uh, I recognize that we haven't received any feedback from the neighbors, um, but being that the neighbor isn't in attendance, and we haven't actually received anything back from them, um, I prefer to at least let them know what, what the intention is. Um, I believe Steve, uh, I think he his word that, uh, that, yeah, he has had discussions with the neighbor, but I just don't have anything documented and we haven't done any sort of analysis on it. Okay. Could you not, is there any way, Jeff, to put it as an approval through and just say on a, on a letter received from the neighbor rather than pushing this off another meeting because we'd like to get this place paved at some point here in the future. And if we put it off another meeting, we're going to be backlogged another two months yet before this ever happens. And we're getting like, it's getting too far off now. We can't wait this long anymore. And I, I would agree with that comment. And I'm, I'm not perfectly clear how the change of, of the hedge, which seems to be just uh not directly related to the building um the site itself if this is a, um, a convenience cosmetic decision by the two property owners i'm not sure but, but, how critical this is as part of this decision yeah uh, yeah that's what i kind of agree too i don't think it's a real critical part to the decision where uh we uh if we both agree on it and if you had a letter from them i don't I just don't understand why we couldn't just come to an agreement, you know, with a letter rather than have to wait for another meeting because uh, yeah, we need to start paving this thing by October 1st and we're not going to make that deadline anymore if we keep pushing this off meetings. In addition, because we've got to revise the site plan and resubmit it. Kevin? Yes. Uh, I think I would be happy to move it subject to uh, Received the city receiving a letter from the neighbor with regards to the hedge. Okay, is there a seconder to that? But I have a I'll question. Second. Yep. Okay, Roger, second. What were you going to say, David? I, I still have a question. Uh, yep, is, go ahead. Uh, ask the question. I guess to Jeff, is is there any restriction uh, preventing anybody from turning left off of Huron Street in? The is there a curb there or is it just painted lines? Yes, right now we feel that someone could turn left into the site from here on street because the existing um, divider between the eastbound and westbound traffic does not extend far enough to prevent that from happening. So the intention is that we wanna make sure that this site is designed such that that cannot happen. Um, so we have to angle that uh, lighting area. And I think I'm still sharing the screen, so I'm going to use my mouse. So the dividing between the right in and the right out, we're going to likely want to see that. Then um, what they're showing on the plan. That left in. Um, we do have a left in from here on street. That's going to back up the traffic at times. Possibly into the intersection. Steve, we're getting a lot yeah. of back. We're getting a lot of background noise uh, through your phone that is making it difficult to hear the other speakers. Okay, I'm on a little bit of a windy spot, so I'll try okay. to move to a calmer spot. All right, thank you. Any further questions from committee members? Uh, question to Mr. Bannon through the chair. Yep. Mr. Bannon, Mr. Hunt's 
uh, recommendation or motion. Uh, does that keep the city safe? Uh, through the chair. Sorry, if you could just repeat that. You cut out at the very end. So I heard the beginning of your question, but not the end. Okay. Is there any legal obligation uh, in re if we make this motion? Uh, do we keep the city out of any legal obligation that way? So you, uh, the city would still actually have final approval? Uh, through the chair. So we still will require site plan approval on the property. So we're going to review right. site plan approval. What you would be with your current motion, you're going to remove the requirement to have a landscaping strip between the two properties, um, which is required because there's a parking lot there. So that's what you're removing. You're, you're taking the hedge down. And my understanding is the request is that they do not want to have a landscape strip there in the form of a hedge or a fence. So you're removing that, that, that obligation for the applicant to provide that to the city. Right. Okay. My question, are you comfortable with that, uh, Mr. Bannon? So, so Rogers, your question that if the letter comes in from the neighbor, My, my question is, like, I don't want the city to be hung out down the road on this, uh, on this situation. Do you understand? Yeah. So I, we need a guarantee of some sort that that's not going to happen. And that's my concern, okay? And Here's so, so yeah. if you're asking if I'm okay with it, um, my comments still apply from before where... I do have some concerns with removing the landscaping strip because we haven't analyzed what impact that has on the main property. If you move ahead with it, they still have to go through site plan approval and we'll still make sure that um, that other condition is included about the right in and right out traffic um, that comes off of Huron Street. But you're basically suggesting that they can remove that landscape strip. Landscape. Subject right. to the agreement between the two parties. That's correct, yes. Okay, David, did you want to clarify the motion or are you comfortable with the motion the way you put it in? You just did, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> well, another, yeah. another thing, can I speak yet or? Yes, go ahead, Steve. Yeah, so, um, so we decide not to put the landscape there, even if Murray Guy sells that property. I mean, it's all in the legal right of the new property owner to put a fence up there if he'd like to put a fence up there, right? And uh, so I don't understand how nobody can get hung out to dry on this thing in, in any way in the future, right? If the two parties there don't want to have the cedar hedge there, I don't understand how there could be like a lot of question about it. Jeff, any comment on that? Yes, so through the chair, that zoning bylaw requirement is the result of the applicant uh, having a parking lot area in the location. So basically removing that requirement and you're putting the onus on the neighbor that if they decide that they want a fence, now it's at the cost to put that fence back up. Um, which, which you're taking the onus off of one property and putting it on the other property. So yep. you know, up to, they, they have that, that right to put a fence up on the property line. But right now, the obligation is on the commercial development, not the adjacent land. Yes. So if somebody, if he sells that property, I mean, that could be made clear to the new owner. Right now, it's the existing owner. So it doesn't, it's, and it's an agreement between us and the existing owner. So if a new property owner wants to accept that cost, that's up to him, right? Through the chair, if you wanted me to respond to that, yes. Yes. Um, if, if this is passed uh, as it is being proposed um, by committee members, then yes, you're putting that obligation on the neighbor. Um, how he finds out about the minor variance, if they contacted us, uh, the city would advise them as such, um, if it is a new owner. Um, but down the road, if they don't contact the city, they might not know that there's no landscape barrier that's required, um, but they'd still be free to put their own fence in if, that, if that's their desire. So they would be able okay, to get the, they call. Go ahead. Go ahead, Steve. 
So there, there is a way for a new owner to find out if he can put a fence there or not, right? We're not, we're not saying he can never put a fence there, but the new owner has an option to call the city, and the city would say, yes, you can put a fence there if you want. Through the yeah. chair, yes, that's correct. The, the, the new owner, um, if that property is ever sold, or the existing owner, if you call into the city and ask us about, about the fence bylaws and where they can place a fence on their property, and they're allowed to put it on their property or on the pro property line between the two uh, properties that we are discussing. Understood. Okay. Any further questions from committee members or anything further that they would like to do going forward here? David, you've made a motion, correct? Well, I guess I was just saying I would make the motion if, if we included that, that uh, we received a letter from the neighbor. But they, they were good with it, so I'll be happy to move it. Okay, is there a seconder to that? I'll second that. Okay. Any further discussion? Anybody opposed? I'm opposed because I'm really not sure that the city has, um, w that they're not in, uh, in legal harm somewhere with that. Okay, so. Uh, I oppose. Okay, just to clarify, Jeff, is, is there any reason that there would be legal ramifications here? Uh, through the chair, I can't speak uh, as a solicitor, obviously, no. uh, whether or not there'd be any legal ramifications. You are taking away some of the rights of the, the adjacent property owner. Um, That's right. But at, at this point in time, you might have agreements from that neighboring property owner. The next property owner, if they do enough diligence, they could find out that there is no landscape barrier required when they move into that property if they call into the city. So it, it's not like it's hidden. It is, um, they're able to find that information out. Um, but the, the city, my previous comment is that the city still hasn't, or us as we have not properly reviewed um, the removal of that landscape. So. So then ideally, uh, from your perspective, Jeff, you would prefer to see that this come back as um, a new proposal so that the landscaping question can be properly addressed? And through the chair, yes, that, that's been my recommendation is that uh, it's better to defer it, um, but it is in your hands. Yeah. Okay, so we have a motion that has been made. It has been seconded. There are two in favor. I'm going to oppose this motion so that this is gonna be defeated so that it does come back and get addressed properly at the city. All right. Good. So you're recommending deferral then? I would, I would, move, think, I would move, think about it. Ms. Smith, go ahead, Roger, go ahead. I would, I would uh, make the deferral motion. And then, then it's up to the landowner if they wish to come back. Okay, there was already a motion on the floor that was seconded and voted on. Um, just procedurally, does that motion need to be withdrawn? before we would accept a deferral motion or can we leave that one and, ha and have the deferral as another motion? Oh, the, the motion was defeated because it did not carry enough votes, okay? Correct, yes. So therefore that, that motion is now defeated so it's off the table and my deferral motion is now on the table. Okay, all right, so you're making the deferral motion. Is there a seconder to the deferral motion? Can we allow the entrance to be approved? because this has to go through site plan for Steve to maintain on schedule at minimum. Steve, or does it have to be? Yes, can we separate these two issues? Because I'm conscious of time sure. and weather as well. Because the actual application didn't deal with the landscaping aspect. It was just the, um, the variance with the 
drive in, drive out, etc. Correct? Yes. So right. through that, through the chair, if I could just get in on the conversation, um, if it is separated out, then that's two separate applications. So you would take the original application as it was written and circulated, and take the original uh, from staff. And the applicant would need to then apply for, with a new minor variance application um, for that cedar hedge. You you can't approve part of the minor variance, at least my understanding is you can't approve part of the minor variance application and then defer part of it till later. You're either approving the minor variance, refusing it, or deferring it. But the minor variance, the way that it was brought forward to us, does not deal with landscaping. It's strictly to do with the um, access, et cetera. Through the chair, yes, that is correct. Okay, That's so then right. we can deal with the application the way it was presented. If anyone wishes to make a motion to approve the application as presented to us. Does anybody wish to make that motion? Charlene? Charlene, I will make that motion. Okay. With the, and there was what, one condition on it? Yes, with the, the one condition about revising the concept plan for right in, right out traffic. Okay. And reason for the approval? Um, the application is desirable for the appropriate development of the property. Okay, and is there a seconder to that application? I will second that. Okay, Roger. Any further discussion? Anybody opposed to the application or the motion as uh, presented and approved? I just want Here, to make sure yeah. that it wasn't on the original application, that it wasn't missed through planning staff either, all right? I'm not pointing, I'm just going, anyways, we'll, Trying at to this make point, time, at, time of that. At this yeah. point in time, we're dealing with the application as presented to us. That's what's being voted on and has been approved. So that can go forward and anything to do with the landscaping would be dealt with separately as a separate issue. Correct? I agree. Yep. All right. Understand. All right. Just, next, next. Yes, Roger. Jeff, before, we, before we vote on this, we all, um, yeah. Already. We already voted. Oh well, um, I have a concern that the applicant knows that if he decides to come back, that there's a cost fit to him. Okay. Does he know that? I'm He's clear on that. I'm probably just going to plant. I'm clear on it. I'm probably just going to plant the cedar trees because I'm tired of coming back to committees all the time. It's taking too long. All right, so that application is approved and we move forward. Next application. Okay, so the next application is A11-20 and it's for 350 Alone Avenue. And the applicant has requested two minor variances to, re to increase the rear yard encroachment for deck and stairs for municipal units 23 to 26. Uh, so staff did not receive any public input or agency comments of concerns and staff uh, support the variances and have included a condition that the building permit plans be in keeping with the concept plan submitted with the minor variance. Is there anyone to speak to this application? Let me just... Megan, can you hear us? She's on mute. Okay. Is there someone to speak to this? So I think Megan from GSP Group. We're just going to have to see if we can. Megan, can you hear us? You'd have to unmute. Okay, Megan, I see you there. Can you hear us? Is 
Any luck with Megan? Uh, I have, um, she has, she has called in and yeah. I believe again, she's having difficulty. Um, Hello. Hi, Megan. Hi, okay. sorry. I was calling in uh, from the landline, and, but I then couldn't type in on the computer. So anyway, I'm here. <laughs> okay. So anything that you wish to add to what Rachel has outlined in terms of the application? Uh, no, I just wanted to say that I had a chance to review the conditions and um, we're uh, in agreement with uh, the recommendation and I'm happy to answer any questions. Okay, committee members have any questions? Go ahead. Hearing none, is there anyone else that wishes to speak to this application? Hearing none, I will entertain a motion. I, I will move that um, the recommendation request for variance be approved um, with the um, condition as stated and the reasons for approval, uh, no public input was received and the minor variance requested is minor in nature. Okay, is there a seconder to that? Second. All second. Nope. <laughs> Dave beat you over, Roger. Second. That's all right. <laughs> and any further discussion? Anyone opposed? That is approved. Thank you. Next application. You. Okay. So through the chair, Megan has one other application with us. So I wonder if it would be appropriate for us to hear her next application while she's still on the line. Any committee Go members over. have a problem? Okay. All right. Go ahead. What's next? Okay, so, so that application, so B12-19, B13-19, and B14-19. So it's for 4117 Perth Line 36. And so the purpose of the submission is to request a change in conditions to the provisional consent that was granted on September 11, 2019 for those applications. And the Planning Act allows the Committee of Adjustment to change conditions before the time that a consent is given. And so the applicant is requesting to add a condition requiring the owner prior to stamping the deed to enter into a subdivision agreement for the first phase of the draft approved plan of subdivision application 31T17001 that includes the extension of Bradshaw Drive North and McCarthy Road West. So this was a request received by the app from the applicant and staff have no uh, concerns with it and are recommending that the condition be added to applications B12-19, B13-19 and B14-19 and have also noted that um, staff are of the opinion that no further notice should be required in accordance with section 53 bracket 26 of the planning act. Hey, Megan, anything that you wish to add? Uh, no, uh, same as before, I had a chance to review the report and uh, agree uh, with the conditions as presented by Rachel. Okay, any committee members have any questions of the applicant? Anyone else wish to speak concerning this application? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion. Can I ask commit? one point of yep, clarification procedurally? Yeah. So all of these different um, recommendations are being taken collectively as one application, correct? So we need one motion here. Rachel? Through the chair, uh, if you would like to take them collectively, I think that makes sense because they're yes. all part of the same process property and it's the same condition being added to each consent. So we could do it through one motion and um, I've kind of worked it as such in the, the decision that that would be appropriate. Okay. You would wish you to make like a motion to the chair to take it collectively as the first step or is that assumed at this point? Let's put the motion and then there's no um, concern about whether it was done correctly or not. Yeah. Okay. Someone want to make the motion to take them collectively? 
I will. Sure. I will. Sure. Second. Yeah. Second. Second by David. Any further discussion? All in favor of taking collectively, or anybody opposed? Hearing none. Okay, so that motion has passed. So now we go forward with the motion on the um, application with the variance. Any anybody wish to make a motion there? I I will make that motion. Okay. Wait, Roger. Yeah. Oh. Roger made the motion, sorry. You have a teeny tiny yeah. voice, Roger. <laughs> oh, okay, I know. That's all. <laughs> so, Roger, you're making the motion and reason? Reason because no public input was heard, okay, and that uh, it's ideal to develop the property. Rachel, you have a point? Uh, through the chairs, just a point of clarification, um, under the Planning Act to add this condition, um, we did not circulate to the public, so there would not have been any public input. Oh, okay oh. then. Well, I will remove that. Okay. And is there a seconder to that motion? I'll second it. All right. Anyone opposed to the motion? Hearing none, that motion is approved. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you, Megan. Mm -hmm. um, just a quick clarification. So the reason was that it was, was it that it was desirable? Yes. Okay, perfect. For the development of the property. Okay. Thank you. All right, Thanks, next Megan. application. Okay. So the next application is A13-20 and it's for 95 Kelly's Lane. And so the purpose of the application is to increase the maximum driveway width and reduce the interior side yard setback for an accessory building and forward eaves. Through the circulation to um, city staff, community services advised that there was tree removal and earth movement that began on the site before any tree protection was considered and that was for the tree in the driveway area and that the maple tree left in the middle of the driveway area will have massive root damage from excavation around the entire circumference and so at this point they're of the opinion that a replace remove and replace option may be a better solution and that a permit is required for the removal of trees on private property in accordance with the private tree bylaw um, so the neighbor did have contact with the adjacent property owner and they have no objection to the variances and that's the property owner whose property would be encroached on by the accessory building. Um, staff are of the opinion they asked for a 0 0.6 meter setback for the accessory building and zero for the eaves. So we're of the opinion that they can have functional eaves that would be 0 0.3 meters from the property line and that would give them room long term should the property change hands or whatnot that they would be able to maintain that on private property. Further, there is an easement that they have over the lands that they're encroaching on, but it's for servicing. They don't have permission to access those lands for uh, building or maintenance of that structure. So staff are of the opinion that the variance is to reduce the eaves uh, from 0 0.6 meters to zero and to increase the maximum driveway width from eight meters to 15.2 meters does not meet the four tests of the Planning Act and staff object to these variances. Staff do support the variances to have a minimum setback of 0.6 meters for the accessory building and a 0 0.3 meter setback for the eaves and to increase the maximum driveway width from eight meters to 10.8 meters a minimum of 20 meters from the front lot line because that will allow them to access their three car garage and have room to back out of that um, for functionality purposes and staff have included four conditions that we think would be appropriate um, with the variances that we are recommending approval that we'd like to see included. Okay, someone to speak to this application. I see John Jancy, unmute yourself if you wish to speak please. Can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Okay, so, excuse me. With respect to the setback for the accessory building, when the slot was created, there was a service easement applied on 97 Kelly's Lane from where this lot was severed. 
We had discussions with the owner of 97 Kelly's about who would retain this servicing triangle. At the time, I never thought it was an issue. If I owned it, I could build on the easement line. It went with 97 Kelly's Lane. Now it is a problem. The facts still remain the same. Only a corner will be up against the property line. 97 Kelly's Lane cannot build on this easement either. So in fact, there will always be a separation between these two properties and any building envelope. There will still be room to maintain the services or my shed as only a corner is against the line. The owner of 97 Kelly's Lane does not object to this reduction. Anyone else will see that it's there. I propose a setback be reduced to zero for the eaves and no firewall be required as a distance to any neighboring buildings is satisfied. Okay. And yep. the neighbor Barry Campbell would like to hook up too, but I'll, I'd like to address the, circ the driveway as well. Go ahead. You want me to? No, okay. keep going. Just, the circular driveway was created to be able to allow this tree to remain. We bought a tree lot and are hoping to reserve, preserve as many trees as possible but still able to build a house. If you look at the picture provided, it is essentially the width of my three-car garage, except it is circular and split in two sides to avoid the tree. We also built the garage to the east side of the property to avoid having to remove additional trees. The report statement that there, quote, will be massive root damage, unquote, is inaccurate and one person's opinion. We tried to be as sensitive as possible when digging and the canopy for that tree is not that large and the undisturbed area is probably half the width of the tree with the roots going down. We also did not get in, into any large roots when we dug. We do not believe that taking this tree down at this time makes any sense as ourselves and our arborists believe this tree will survive. Why take it down now as no one can guarantee it will not survive. Once it is down, it is gone. So why take it down now? We can always take it down. I'm not against planting trees or trees. In 1993, I planted 4,400 trees on my farm in Wellesley. In 2005, when we moved to Shakespeare, I moved 18 trees from my farm to our house and bought another 12 trees from a nursery. We will plant some trees in the slot again after our house is built if possible. After all, we did pay a lot of money for a tree lot. The driveway across the tree does make sense and we have received all positive response from anyone who has seen it. It will allow a three-point turn around, allowing us to drive out onto Kelly's Lane instead of backing out. Our lot has lots of trees up against the road as there's no shoulders, and the neighbors have trees as well at the edge of the pavement, making visibility difficult. The neighbors to the east have a turnaround area, and to the west, they have a large circular driveway extending pretty much across the width of their property. We dispute the report's comment of driveway design won't result in the retention of the maple tree, is out of character for the area, and the design is not required for the safe and functional access. We believe the, char the, char the character of the neighborhood and is, is safe to enter and exit. I understand there are setback rules, but the setback distance is more than normal at the request of the neighbor to the east who severed this lot and sold it to us. His request for the 30 meter setback was to prohibit someone from building a house in front of his. We have kept the house back off the road in between the house to the east and the house to the west. We believe that we have tried to fit a house in between two houses and have made a plain plan that we think works and the neighbors like. Anything to increase safety by being able to drive versus backing onto a road and work with existing trees is a benefit and should be allowed. This is a truly unique property as are all properties on Kelly's Lane. We believe that our proposed site layout fits the property and the location and is trying to preserve as many trees as possible and will be a positive on Kelly's Lane. I believe that the rules that apply to all of Stratford have to be looked at individually in this case and a minor variance allowed. Okay. Is there anyone else that wishes to speak to this application? No. Okay. Members of the committee that have questions of the applicant. I have one, Kevin. Go ahead. Just the accessory building, why, why wouldn't they have turned it to be parallel with that property line to the northeast? Mr. To Jansi, be yeah. parallel to the property. Then, well, that whole nothing on that property is parallel to Kelly's Lane. No, it's all. Uh, out of out of 90s and 45s angles so the accessory building will have a door at the one end that we can access 
and we'll be able to go through our garage on the house and get into the back. So it is now parallel to the eastern Ouch. lot line. Yeah. But going back closer to the property, to the boundary to the north, which is uh, surrounded by trees there. So we're staying out of them. Is, is, that, that, a, is that answer, answer your uh, question, sorry, David? Yep, that's fine. Okay. Any other committee members have questions of the applicant? Yes, Charlene. Sorry, mine is not of the applicant, it's of the planner. Yes, go ahead. A point of clarification. Um, with the recommendations um, stated, point number three, it reads that the owner obtain a permit is obtained to remove. Do you mean that to read that the owner um, is required to obtain a permit or I'm just not clear what how that sentence is to read through through the chair yes that the owner be required to obtain a permit to remove the maple tree and okay. with, the, with the bylaw okay okay any other questions can I just, yes, can I just add in yeah uh, Barry Campbell would like to be hooked in he just sent me a text okay they have to unmute you have to unmute him I don't see him on here do he was talking to you, Jeff earlier Jeff do you have him or you can connect him okay through the chair is his phone number nine four nine eight one six six uh just give me a second um... uh phone numbers yes Okay, one moment, please, and we'll get to you. Yep. Okay, Mr. Campbell, you wanted to speak? Do you have a connection with him, Jeff? Uh, I have him shown on there, and I think he needs to click on the button to unmute himself. And there he is. Hi, good afternoon. Can everyone hear me? Yes, go ahead, please. Well, hi, I just, I uh, wanted to jump into the committee uh, meeting for just a second to speak on John's behalf. John and I have been talking extensively about all his plans and he's been open and transparent. I did want to, I, uh, I'll speak to two points, both the driveway and, uh, and the variance uh, for the uh, building at the back. Um, to John's point, it's this is a everything about this application a lot is is interesting we spent lots of time with planning staff over three four years working through uh, the application for severance the easement at the back is as John said required in the event we would ever from and we are formerly 97 Kelly's Lane now 93 Kelly's Lane if 93 Kelly's Lane ever needed to connect into city services we're on septic and well at the moment. So one of the conditions for severance was that we needed to create a, a mechanism whereby we could, we could connect in. And as a result, that triangle at the back was created. I, I can say that there was lots of debate about who could or should own that triangle. Um, it was really a, a, a coin toss. There wasn't anything material other than it made sense that we would at 93 Kelly's Lane retain ownership as we would be the ones incurring cost and connecting into city services. So, you know, MTE and others suggested we retained ownership and we did. Again, to John's point though, no one will ever be building on that easement. It is a very unique uh, structure and piece of property. The easement itself is probably 80 feet from our house. Um, I cannot speak for future owners. I can say that it would be, uh, I think, impossible to build on that corner um, as it would render the mechanism to connect to city services useless. So having the setback right to the property line not only doesn't bother us because it's so far from our house, um, but wouldn't affect uh, future owners, in my opinion, because there could not be any further building on that corner. So
So we're, we're perfectly fine with that. And as I said, John and I talked extensively about it. Um, in terms of the driveway, again, a very unique application. And through the three to four years, the one thing that we spent a lot of time working through with planning staff was that Kelly Lane is not as wide as it should be. And I believe it's, you know, the required width is seven meters. We're somewhere around five meters wide. There were concerns for access by emergency response teams, both fire, paramedic, et cetera. Um, so in terms of, you know, both uh, the new owners who just built down at 99, putting in a circular drive, and John's strategy to create a wider driveway, in fact, increases safety for everyone on the lane in the event, let's say, a, uh, an emergency responder had to get out of the way of a fire truck. I'm just using examples. This is yet another opportunity for emergency response flexibility that didn't exist before. So from, I, I can't speak for all the neighbors, I can only speak for myself and I, with young family, I'm very interested in the security on the, uh, the safety on the lane. I, I was thrilled to hear that the driveway was going to be widened and he was going to be putting in a circular driveway. We are arguably the, the only neighbor really affected by it from a visual perspective because the front of our property looks directly onto that driveway and we're perfectly fine with that. Um, as John said, I, I, think, I think retaining that original maple tree is brilliant um, and, and it does not have a wide canopy. And so to me, it makes sense that John's done everything he can to retain the original tree, that he should be given the opportunity to keep that thing alive. And I believe wholeheartedly that if, if, um, if, he, if, if the tree doesn't survive, John will replace it. And that's just my, again, my personal opinion, no guarantees. So I'm fine with all of the variances that uh, have been put before the committee as, as the direct neighbor and probably the neighbor most impacted by those variances. Okay, thank you for your comments. Members of the committee have additional questions? David or Roger? No. 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 Okay. Anyone else to speak to this application? Hearing none, I will entertain a motion. I will move the, uh, the variances. Uh, under, we have four conditions that have to be met. Is that correct, uh, uh, Rachel? Through the chair, the staff report has four conditions in it. Yeah. Now, um, in, in, in that uh, situation, in those four conditions, um, I don't see to obtain a permit to remove the maple tree and any other trees requiring removal of the driveway and accept the structure. So those four uh, recommendations means that he has to take the tree down, item three. Through the chair, community services went out and they actually saw the excavation and they raised those concerns about the tree. So that's where um, that condition came from through discussions with community services. We haven't seen an arborist report or anything to that nature. And um, had the property owner not excavated around the tree prior to um, this application being heard, we would have recommended um, tree protection be implemented through the excavation, um, but, but it was done prior, so community services didn't see what occurred, but they saw the, the final product and they raised that concern, so that's why that condition was included. Regardless, if the tree, any trees that are coming down on private property, the owners are required to now go to community services and see if they require a tree removal permit as per the, the new bylaw that was passed this year. Um, so, but this condition was included as um, it was felt that the tree wouldn't survive by community services. Okay, so if I move this recommendation, then I would, uh, as far as the, 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 the tree in the driveway, the one that the gentleman wants to maintain, I would have to move item three out of the refining staff recommendations. Is that correct? 
through the chair, you would have that option of taking that condition out. And then should the tree in the future need to come down, the owner would still be required to go to community services and obtain a permit. Absolutely, I understand that. Okay, so I'm going to move uh, the variances uh, and staff recommendation excluding item three. Okay, and reason? Reason, uh, good use, good use of the land, and okay. we've had public input, and we have had public input. Okay. Is there a seconder to that motion? Further discussion? Yes. Okay, go <laughs> ahead. <laughs> okay, so Roger. Yes. Um, yeah. it, yes, so the um, the variances being listed there are recommended by planning staff, the one, two, three, reduce the minimum setbacks. Yeah. So those are, are different from what was originally requested by the applicant. Right. And you're comfortable yeah. with that, Roger? Yes, I am. Okay. I'll question to question to the applicant. Yes. You've seen the proposed variances that planning staff have put forward in terms of the uh, application. Are you comfortable with the three um, listings or items that are listed there by planning staff? The four points. No, I'm talking the three for, to, re, to reduce the minimum setback from one meter to 0.6 meters, to reduce the minimum setback for eaves from 0.6 meters to 0.3, and to increase maximum driveway width from eight meters to 10.8 meters, a minimum of 20 meters from the front lot line. That's what planning staff is recommending. Yes, but I see no reason why, obviously I'd like to have the shed up against the lot line. But the driveway, I want to be able to go on either side of that tree. And I'm not sure that the minimum 20 feet from the front lot line, 20 meter is going to do it because the tree's a little closer. Uh, but the original variance requested, let me just go back here. To increase the maximum driveway width from eight meters to 15.2 meters is what was requested. Right. Uh -huh. And so applying staff is saying the, to increase maximum width from eight meters to 10.8 meters. Yeah, and that's a reduction, correct? That would be correct, yes. Yes, and no, I'm not in agreement with that reduction. Okay, Roger, does this have a bearing in terms of uh, your motion? Yeah, I, I believe that um, planning staff are of the opinion of the minor variances. And I do believe that uh, the shed should not be built on the, on the property line. Uh, and I understand he would like that, we all would, but unfortunately the rule is that it should be a meter off the line. Um, so to reduce the minimum setback, one, two, and three has to be in my, uh, Planning staff or opinion of the minor variance listed below conform to the PPS and meets the four way test of the planning act. The so one, two, and three will be in, and I, and then stepping down to one item of two, three, and four, I would just remove item three, and that would be my motion. Okay. And is there a seconder to that motion? Charlene has seconded. Any further discussion to that motion? Anyone opposed? That motion is passed. Thank you. Next application. Next up is at 128 Brown Street. It's located on the west side Brown Street between Russell Drive and Thomas Street. The applicant is requesting to reduce the minimum size yard, side yard setback for a deck from 1.5 meters to zero meters. Okay. 
Anyone to speak to this application? To the chair, we do have uh, Juliet is in attendance and uh, she has to unmute herself. Juliet, would you like to speak to the application and add anything to the, what the planner has outlined? Is she there? Uh, she's muted. Uh, she's coming in on the phone. Yes, we're here. Okay, there. Okay. So anything that you wish to add to what the planner has outlined in terms of the application? No. Okay. Any of the committee members have questions of the applicant? No. Hearing none, is there anyone else that wishes to speak to this application? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion. Any of the committee members wish to make a motion? Charlene, go ahead. Planner's recommendation with the, the three conditions listed. Um, and the public input. No, there was none, none received. None received, right, sorry, I'm looking for that. And um, the minor variance requested is minor in nature. Okay, is there a seconder to that? I'll second it. Mr. Chairman. Okay, Mr. Hunt seconds. Any further discussion? Anyone opposed to the motion? Hearing none, that is approved. Thank you. Thank you. Any other applications to be heard by the committee? To the chair, no, I think you covered them all. Okay, and thank you all for participating.